Hey guys, in this video I will show you 7 mistakes beginners make when building their own off-grid solar system. This is what we will talk about. I'm Nick, author of the book Off-Grid Solar Power Simplified. I have helped hundreds of people design their own off-grid solar system. Ready? Let's get started. One of the most common mistakes is undersizing your system. Many of my clients underestimate their battery and solar panel needs, leading to insufficient power. To avoid this, perform a thorough load analysis before starting your system design. Make a list of all the devices you plan to use, including their power rating and the amount of hours they will run daily. For example, if you have an AC unit that consumes 1600 watts, and a microwave that consumes 1400 watts, and you plan to run both simultaneously. Your inverter should handle at least 3000 watts plus the surge power. Check out my video on system design for a detailed guide on performing a load analysis and selecting the right components. The second mistake is using a low battery voltage for high power inverters, which can lead to higher costs. For instance, a 3 kW inverter on a 12V system draws 250 amps. Adding the required safety factor, we will get 313 amps. You will need a 2 alt cable, which will cost you $100 for 20 feet. Switching to a 48V system reduces the current to 63 amps. And with a safety factor, you will need a cable that can carry 80 amps. A 6 gauge cable costs $30 for the same length. We can see that increasing the battery voltage will reduce the cost of the wire. Here are my recommendations for inverter and battery voltages. For 12 volt battery, use inverters up to 1200 watts. For a 24 volt battery, up to 2400 watts. And for a 48 volt battery, up to 6 kilowatts. Similarly, a charge controller for 1000 watts of solar panels on a 12V system needs to handle 70 amps, which will cost you $380. And for a 48V system, the same 1000 watts of solar panels only requires a 20 amp charge controller. A charge controller for this setup will cost you $180, less than half the price with room to spare. Mistake number three are undersized cables that can lead to overheating or even melting of the cable. Cables are rated for different insulation temperatures, such as 60, 75, 90 and 105 degrees Celsius. The lower the temperature rating, the less current a cable can carry. Always use welding cables if you follow my blueprints as they are rated for higher temperatures, thus can carry more current. If you don't have access to welding cables, use the table on the left for determining the correct wire thickness based on the temperature rating of the insulation. Also, make sure the cables you buy are not copper clad aluminum, also listed as CCA. These conduct less current than pure copper. Pure copper stranded cables are preferred for your system. Mistake number four is using the wrong fuses. In DC systems, we use fuses while AC systems typically use breakers. Each fuse is rated for a specific current and interrupting current capacity at specific voltages or ICC in short. For example, a mega fuse rated for 32 volts cannot be used in a 48V system, which can see voltages up to 58.4V. You will need to find a specific fuse rated for higher voltages. Interrupting current rating is equally important. This rating indicates the maximum current the fuse can safely interrupt in the event of a short circuit. I created this table for reference. If we have a MIDI fuse, it is suitable for 12V and 24V systems and can handle an interrupting current of 2000 amps at 32V. If a 12V 100Ah lithium battery 
experiences a short circuit, it can deliver a current of 1000 amps. That's about 10 times its capacity. A MIDI fuse can handle this as it supports an ICC of up to 2000 amps at 32 volts. For a larger battery, such as 48 volt 400 amp hour lithium battery, which can deliver a short circuit current of 4000 amps. MIDI, MEGA, MRBF or ANL fuses are insufficient. Instead, you will need a class T or NH00 fuse, which can handle both the higher voltage and a higher short circuit current. If you don't want to miss out on my upcoming videos, subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon to be notified when I post new videos. Mistake number 5 is using cheap lugs. I made a short video about cheap versus quality lugs. I will play it here. This lug costs 25 cents and weighs only 2 ounces. This lug costs 1 dollar and weighs 4 ounces. Do not use cheap lugs, because their walls are too thin. They cannot conduct the current they are rated for. Check what happens when we crimp the cheap lugs with the correct die. The lug just comes right off. This is because the walls are not thick enough to compress the lug on the wire. Now look what happens when we use an expensive lug with the same die. It doesn't come off. You can see me pulling back the insulation. Some people complain that the dies of the hydraulic crimper are too big. But in fact, it's the cheap lugs you're using. When choosing cable lugs, use lugs that cost at least $1 each. So don't buy cheap ones. This also applies to ferrules and ring terminals. Always use branded materials from reputable companies that are UL listed or sourced from your local hardware store. Quality looks ensure reliable connections and long-term durability of your system. If you got value from this video so far, give it a like. Mistake number 6 is using non-branded fuses and breakers, because they often lack proper testing and safety data. Relying on such components can compromise the safety of your system. I strongly recommend using high quality branded fuses and breakers from trusted manufacturers like Blue Sea Systems, Little Fuse, Busman, Siemens or Schneider. These brands provide reliable products with verified safety ratings, ensuring your system's protection. Avoid no-name fuses and breakers, as they may not be rated correctly and could fail to protect your system. There are plenty of videos online showing these tests. The last mistake on the list, but the one which I see happen a lot, is not respecting the discharge rate of a battery. Different battery types have specific charging and discharge rates, which are crucial to maintain optimal performance and longevity of the battery. Lead acid batteries, typically have a discharge rate of 0.2 C, while lithium batteries can handle a discharge rate of 1 C. For lead acid batteries, a 12 volt 100 amp hour battery has a maximum discharge rate of 20 amps. Multiplying by the battery voltage, we get a maximum power draw of 240 watts. Connecting a 1000 watt inverter to a single 12 volt 100 amp hour lead acid battery would significantly reduce the battery's lifespan as it exceeds the maximum discharge rate. In contrast, a 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium battery with a 1C discharge rate can handle 100 amps. This means it can support a 1200 watt load. Therefore, you can use a 1000 watt inverter with a single 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium battery. Exceeding the discharge rate for lead acid batteries can cause sulfation and reduced capacity, while for lithium batteries, the battery management system or BMS will shut down to prevent damage. Always follow the manufacturer's guidelines on charge and discharge rates to ensure your batteries perform efficient and last longer. Do you have one to add? Let us know in the comments so we can learn from each other. And I will see you in the next one.